Path of Exile 3.12 is Heist League, where we're going to be infiltrating enemy bases and trying to get some fat loot, including a ton of currency, interesting new uniques, as well as some changed uniques that we've known for many years. And what better way to start Heist League than with one of the most powerful builds that I've played in some time. This build survived all of the nerfs, all of the patch notes, all of the everything, does insane single target, insane clear, is insanely hard to kill. This is Archmage Ball Lightning Ascendant. Hey guys, Big Ducks here, and welcome back to the channel. And you heard me right, that means that Ball Lightning Archmage is absolutely going to be one of the best starters for this league. It didn't get any nerfs that actually affect the build. Base damage doesn't actually do anything for Archmage, as well as the area. We already have a ton of area, it's not going to matter whatsoever. So if you're looking for a build that can do absolutely all of the content in the game and make it a complete joke, I'm talking Uber Elder, I'm talking Cirrus 8, I'm talking Hall of the Grandmasters, I'm talking pretty much everything that you can throw at this build. 100% delirious, like high tier red maps, anything. It doesn't really matter. This build can handle it with no problem. So remember guys, if you enjoy my content, make sure to like this video so that more people can see it. And also don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content similar to this. And without further ado, let's take a look at a little bit of the leveling, a couple of the things that we did, and then we'll get into the guide. If you want to have an insane amount of money early on in the league, there is one way and only one way to do it, right? What you need to do, and this is this is what most of those people who make like fucking 40, 50, 100 exalts in the first couple of days do. Doing the chaos recipe as much as you possibly can in the first day, and then you should be investing in as many exalts as you can possibly get through chaos recipe. Because exalts are going to be really cheap in the first couple of days. You invest in exalts by doing the chaos recipe, buy as many as you possibly can, and then once exalts make their jump, then you start investing in in crafting things and investing in things that you think are going to be good for the league itself. However, there is a but, and this is a big but, but that is one of the least fun things you can possibly do in this game in my opinion. What do you think about the new rework skills? Uh, we talked quite a bit about them at the beginning of the stream. I think that most of them look good. Oh, this is actually, uh, this is actually tier 16. Al has been too. Yeah, that was a tier 16 one. That was like the that was like the super buff out um Al Hesman. Alright. Imagine that happens to a new player. <laughs> Ooh, I didn't kill the right one first. Please kill her. Please. Thank you. What's up, nerd? I heard you spin, and I heard you win. I'm not seeing very much win in gamer. Man, that would be rough. Imagine it fucking popped the new player into the goddamn Vault Temple. Like, that boss is not a joke. That'd be pretty hilarious. Your pain will be endless. <laughs> Goodbye, Veritonia. Is there any good cheap legend, um, uh, legendary stuff? You mean unique stuff? Before getting Pledge of Hands in the early league? No, the best staff before Pledge of Hands is a random rare with mana crafted on it. Like, that's all that you really care about. What's my destiny, boy? Hmm? Where's my destiny at, gamer? See, the idea being is that without Pledge of Hands, this'll feel like any of my other builds, right? Like when you're killing bosses and killing enemies, it'll just feel like a really solid build, right? When you add in a five or six link Pledge of Hands, it becomes a fucking, like, monstrously powerful build. Okay, so this is a Droxy boy. Three, four, five, six, seven. Come on, don't go immune. I've got my fucking damage up, boy. Don't go immune to damage. What are you doing? There you go. I mean, even in his defensive phase, we're still doing pretty good DPS, dude. Good night, Drox. It is time to get serious. So we're at Awakener level eight. Let's take a uh, let's take a stroll down memory lane of fighting our boy Cirrus. What do you count down from before boss fights? That's me using the mana flask, and that's the countdown for when it begins working. Six, seven. Because it takes about seven solid seconds before the mana flask actually starts doing its job. Um, I'm not sure how those rings and all of that's going to work. I have no real idea. Your guess is as good as mine. Because we do not know. Oh hey, we actually got the one where he uh, where he casts this. I've had so many Cirruses where he just straight up never casts that. 
Can you stop doing your invulnerability shit, Cirrus? Like, I could kill you so much faster if you'd stop doing that. But yeah, you can kind of see. Cirrus, Cirrus is pretty much a joke, but he, he likes to, uh, he, he likes to be invulnerable a lot of the time. Alright guys, so this is Ball Lightning Archmage, and we have some drinking problems. Now, this is a build that absolutely does insane damage. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. I have a previous build guide up for this, and the most asked question out of anything in the entirety that I've gotten is about this flask. So I want to make absolutely sure that if you're watching this video, you understand. This foreboding eternal mana flask is absolutely mandatory for the build. No other flask will work. You have to use this. And the explanation of how you use it is you hit the flask two to three times a second. Just hit the flask a whole bunch and you will be perfectly fine. The reason that is, and I'm going to show you here, is that when you actually hit this flask over and over again, it's going to take a little bit of time to get started, but as soon as it does get started, it's actually going to give you infinite mana. Like, legitimately, when I say infinite mana, I mean it's just going to give you giant chunks of your mana pullback instantly. So as you're clearing and as you're doing bosses, this mana flask is going to replenish itself because of the ascendancy and because of the skill tree. And you're legitimately going to be able to spend 14, 16, 20,000 mana every four seconds. No lie. But now that we've got that out of the way, now that everybody knows that the foreboding mana flask is mandatory for this build, let's actually talk a little bit about it. So this is an Archmage build. This utilizes Pledge of Hands. Uh, you don't have to worry about the Explodey Chest. You absolutely don't need this. We tested it with a Tabula. This uses a Crown of the Inward Eye, where basically, if you can kind of see what's going on here, we're scaling mana. It's an Archmage build. The more mana that we have, the more mana that we can make our spell cost, the more damage it's going to do. Now you're probably thinking, if you saw the patch notes, Big Ducks, Ball Lightning got nerfed, it lost some area and it lost some base damage. Well, the thing about it is, is that base damage is actually completely irrelevant. The only thing that matters for the damage of Ball Lightning is going to be the effectiveness of added damage. And the effectiveness of added damage, as far as we know, has not changed whatsoever with the patch notes. So it did lose some base area, but with how much AOE Greater Spell Echo gives us, this build is going to be perfectly fine. Nothing to worry about. The AOE on this spell is so large that the last cast of it is actually hitting enemies behind us. So you've really got nothing to worry about. The build doesn't require any gear whatsoever to actually function. Pledge of Hands does make it significantly better, however, you can legitimately run this build with a bunch of rares, with life, mana, and resist on them. You can run it with a tabula, you can run it without the Pledge of Hands, you can run it without any of the cool gear that we have on it. Just rares. And it will be perfectly fine for doing tier 16 maps. Let's actually run a map, and I have a pretty interesting map for you here. If you saw the previous video, you know this build is able to handle a lot. So, the map that we're running this time is once again a tier 18 map. You're gonna see that two of these say plus one to level of uh, monsters in the area. So this is gonna be a tier 16 map that we're running two plus one watch zones on. We've got a bunch of extra enemies in the zone, three things that cause it to uh, be extra enemies. We've got an additional Legion encounter. I'm running four Gilded Scarabs, and this is a tier 16 Phantasmagoria map with elemental equilibrium, meaning they're going to take less damage, with monsters have elemental resistance, which means they're going to take a lot less damage. It's going to be vulnerability, enfeeble, two bosses, and beyond. On top of everything else that I'm putting in there, I'm also going to be running an extra Legion on it. We're gonna be putting Einhar in there as well, just so you guys can really see just how strong this build is. So keep in mind, just a, a quick recap here. These enemies are going to be taking like 65% less damage from me. If I, ha if I don't have my flask up, I'm going to be enfeebled and vulnerable. They're going to be having tier 18 worth of, of tier 18 maps worth of health and a bunch of extra stuff in this map. So let's get to it. Let's show you how strong this build actually is. So at the beginning of every map, you do need to know that you are going to want to start hitting the flask early. So you want to start hitting this a little bit before you even begin fighting anything in the map whatsoever. Now you're going to see right away that even though this is a tier 18 map, and in a tier 18 map, the enemies are taking 65% less damage. It doesn't matter. The enemies still die pretty much instantly. The only things that are living are like blue and yellow mobs that have, I mean, I can't even see. I'm going to have to turn items off. I, I can't even see the, where I'm going because of all the items that are over there. But you can see here. 
Except for it seems mobs that have like insane resistances built into them, everything is just kind of melting. And this is just with the clear version of it, right? This is without using most of my extra stuff. This is without using like Ball Righteous Fire. I, it's, it's absolutely insane the amount of clear that this build has. These are beyond mobs. There's extra beast mobs in here. All right, so we're gonna pop a Legion Stone here. So I'm gonna pop some extra cooldowns. We're gonna pop a Legion Stone and just absolutely melt everything. Oh, here's Kiri. Oh, there's Kiri. Okay, she's dead. <laughs> oh, here's another one. Here's Marcus. All right, he's dead. All right, what else do we have? Anything good? Doesn't look like it. So keep in mind that all of that... Yeah, okay, here here we go. Here's Host. He's, uh, he's doing some damage to us, but because of our ridiculous regeneration, we're not having any problems whatsoever, right? So we'll pop a we'll pop a breach at the same time as doing all of this Legion stuff here. That'll be good, I'm sure. I'm sure it'll go well. There there is a high chance that I'm gonna just die randomly here, because I'm I'm legitimately just hard ending, right? I'm I'm not doing anything that I need to be doing. Just to stay alive and um actually just completely fine. So remember, tier 18 map. Enemies take like 65% less damage from me right now on this map. And I, I'm not, uh, actually, I'm not even using Blood Rage properly. So this build is ridiculous, yeah? And this isn't, this isn't even with slower projectiles. Keep in mind, slower projectiles increases the damage of this build by like two to three times the amount of damage. So I, I don't even, I, I don't even know if it's worth it to click any of this stuff. I mean, <laughs> there's just so much of it. The idea behind the build is as long as you're hitting this mana flask, you are basically immortal. There's just nothing for you to really ever worry about. We have like 8,000 effective health pool through Mind Over Matter. We've got infinite life because of our, um, because of our mana flask, plus the use of the agnostic keystone. I mean, we're, we're, we're insanely strong, dude. It's it's kind of nuts, actually. Oh, here's where Viper was. I don't know, did I get her? No, I didn't, unfortunately. I, I, I don't know how to sing the praises of this build enough. Like, the Explodey Chest isn't necessary. It's not the Explodey Chest carrying our damage here whatsoever. The Explodey Chest actually isn't that much damage at all. Um, you're not really gonna be able to get them very easily in the next patch, so you don't have to worry about getting it whatsoever. And you actually do more damage if you get a better chest piece than what I've got. I just built like a crazy meme chest piece because of Harvest. Ooh, I ran out of mana there. All right, there's your death. You can see, I it, it is possible to die on this build. We're gonna jump back to where we were. Now that we're back over here, the reason I actually died there is because I stopped hitting the flask. I stopped hitting the flask and I was just standing in damage stuff. It's kind of a good lesson and I'm, I'm, I'm actually a little bit glad that it happened here. If you do stop hitting the flask, you can, you become mortal. You're no longer I immortal and unable to be killed by anything, right? So you really do need to keep hitting that flask. But that's about the only thing, and I probably should have put in slower projectiles, but you know, I didn't. I'll show you slower projectiles when we get to the boss, but I mean, we're, we're absolutely mowing down this map with pretty much no issues whatsoever. So we're gonna jump to the boss, and then we'll continue with the video. All right, so here we are at the boss. So we are going to swap out to slower projectiles. Now I want you guys to remember, this is a map with a ridiculous amount of mods on it, but 49% monster elemental resist. It's got elemental equilibrium, a bunch of curses, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So this boss is legitimately taking like, I don't know, if elemental equilibrium gets affected by Awakener 8, and we are on Awakener 8, remember, it's it's like 80% less damage from what I'm supposed to be doing. So we're gonna run into this boss on a tier 18 map, taking like 80% less damage. I think it's double boss too, I don't even remember. And we're gonna see what happens. Ooh, she actually almost one-shots us with her hits. But you can kind of see, even with taking 80% less damage and being on a tier 18 map, I mean, she still pretty much dies instantly. So that's with 80% less damage taken. It's pretty insane, not gonna lie. All right, so now that we've done a map, now that you've seen what this build is capable of, I mean, tier 18, tons of damage reduction mods, all kinds of sextants, all kinds of scarabs, all kinds of crazy stuff. Still perfectly fine, still mowed down everything like it was nothing. Now that you've seen all that, let's talk a little bit more about the actual build itself and some of the basics of it. Now, this is a Mind Over Matter, mana stacking, agnostic, Archmage build. 
the idea is is that we stack a ton of mana and with that mana we increase our life pool by 30 percent plus another 10 percent on our watcher's eye i don't even know where it is all right here so plus another 10 percent on our watcher's eye on top of that we can actually get a chess piece that has an additional 10 percent i never even got that so this chess piece isn't even amazing the only thing on this is the spells have crit and power charges when you remove all of that it's like a million damage off of 15 million so i mean it, it really doesn't matter that much i've demonstrated with this build with tabula and a yellow staff so you don't need any of that right like you you don't need any of this crazy gear to be able to do as much as i did but i wanted to show you guys that if you do invest a little bit into the build right you just get the six link pledge of hands you could even use a five link one and just get a half decent mana chest piece you don't need all this crazy stuff on it just get a half decent mana chest piece you will be mowing down content like this is a mana stack build the agnostic allows us to constantly refill our health pool up to 20 percent of our mana per second so we're regening like 2,000 life ish per second whenever we lose some it does mean that we can't have energy shield so no energy shield is kind of uh bad for if you're wanting to try to stack hybrid or anything like that mind over matter increases our effective health pool and then on top of that we do just utilize a bunch of mana nodes a bunch of flask nodes and a bunch of crit nodes crit life mana and flask effectiveness you'll see a lot of these nodes say like mana flask gain one charge every three seconds you'll see that some of them say things like flask supply do have increased effect and increased mana recovery from flask You'll also see increased flash charges gained. So between our ascendancy, which gives us 15% chance for flash to not consume charges, and also them gaining three charges every three seconds and everything else, we are obtaining a ton of flash charges. Now, a lot of people have asked me questions about this ascendancy. And the thing that I wanna tell you is that after a lot of testing, I genuinely believe that the Pathfinder plus the Inquisitor are the two best, and I don't think that anything else is better. There have been some people saying Hierophant, just like a straight Hierophant, I don't agree, it's not as good. Um, there's been some people asking about going Elementalist to preventing Reflect damage, it's not as good. You can just either roll over the maps or you can get like a ring, a Pantheon point, and some stuff on the tree to prevent Reflect. There's been a lot of people asking about a ton of stuff. I, I genuinely think these two are the best. You can go with whatever you want, but I'd prefer if you don't change the build completely and then come to me and be like, hey, your build sucks and it doesn't work. Well, look at my build. And then you're like, you have like Elementalist and Juggernaut or something. You're like, your build doesn't work, dude. It's like, well, it's not my build anymore. This tree and these ascendancies are pretty important to actually performing properly. Now, the last thing of interest here is this Thunderstruck Jewel right here. You don't need this like cluster jewel like I have here, the Storm Drinker Thunderstruck Widespread Destruction 9 passive one. You just need any jewel with Thunderstruck and this will make it so that normal map bosses and such pretty much just float away from you from being knocked back so many times. It's pretty important, but you can actually get this even on solo cell phone. All you need to do is find the base jewel of any amount of passive skills. This is actually relatively common to roll. Uh, the Watcher's Eye is really good, but it's once again not needed whatsoever. You could use a Cloak of Defiance in the chest piece if you really wanted to. Um, but that's pretty much it about the build. Um, none of the crazy stuff is required. Just get some random jewels with life and mana on them. That's all that really matters. Now, a big thing about this build. If you are league starting with this build, this build is very tough to league start with if you don't listen very closely and pay attention to the path of building that's going to be in the description below. I've got full notes, I've got full information, full skill trees, skills, and everything that you should use while leveling up, and you really need to pay close attention to what I say here if you don't want to have a miserable time leveling up. The Scion, unfortunately, is kind of annoying to level with. However, if you do follow what I say, it won't be that bad. When you initially fight Hillock in the first zone, it's gonna be tough, trust me. You only get spectral throw, spectral throw kind of sucks. If you can push him up against the wall and just kind of like throw the spectral throw against the wall, you'll have an easier time. However, when you get into town, you're going to obtain a storm blast mine. So storm blast mine is probably the best ability that you can use while leveling. So when you slot in storm blast mine, I actually suggest that you put the detonate on your left click. So if you put the detonate on your left click and you actually cast some storm blast mines, you'll see you just cast a bunch of them on the ground and then as you walk, it will detonate them. So just as you go, you can know you can just sit here and cast them and when you move it'll detonate them it'll make your life a lot easier after you get storm blast mine you're also going to get orb of storms at level four so with orb of storms you're just going to be putting it on the ground and you're going to be casting lightning build abilities inside of it 
and while you cast lightning abilities inside of the circle, it's going to zap enemies nearby. And it's gonna cause you to do quite a bit of damage. The next thing that you're going to be getting is you're gonna be getting Flame Dash and Smoke Mine as your movement abilities. These two abilities are going to carry you all the way to around 27-ish. On the way though, you do wanna pick up some more gems. So you're gonna to want to pick up Arcane Cloak. You're gonna to wanna to level this up as say, maybe in your offhand or in just another slot. You're gonna to wanna to grab Frenzy and you're gonna to wanna to grab Wave of Conviction. All three of these will be used later. The next thing that you're gonna be getting access to is Spell Slinger. So Spell Slinger itself is going to be the best method of leveling from around 28 until 38. Those 10 levels are best spent as a Spell Slinger. The problem is that you get Spell Slinger at 24. However, the Scion, once again being difficult, is going to not obtain Arc, it's going to not obtain Ball Lightning, and it's not going to obtain any of the main gems that we need until you get to the library in Act 3. The library is this place that's over to the left of the Imperial Gardens here. So you'll see the library is up here. I don't even have it discovered in standard, but you go to the Imperial Gardens. You're going to walk up this path to the left here, and you're going to go help Siosa with his quest, and then you'll be able to buy any of the jewels, the gems rather, that you need. So you're going to have to do that, and after you do that, you'll have a much easier time. You'll be able to swap over to Ball Lightning. Um, in the path of building, you'll see that I have the Spell Slinger links, they should be properly updated for the new changes. I know it's a little bit before, but I did the math and it should come out to using about 95% of your mana if you use the correct Spell Slingers that I put in there. Keep that in mind, take a look at that, and make sure that you follow those things in the path of building very, very closely. The next thing is talking about actually leveling up and grabbing gear early on. So when you hit the first couple of acts, the main thing that you should really be focusing on is trying to get three links and four links in your gear. You should be checking these vendors all the time for movement speed boots, um, you should be checking them for just decent items and three links like these and four links. You're really going to want to mainly be looking for blue and green three and four links. Every time that you level up, these vendors change. So all of the items in here get recycled, you get new items that you can grab, and they will be a good source of getting those early links. Now another thing is that very, very early on, you're going to want to pick up a carved wand. Now I actually don't have any carved wands here, which is fine. You just need to make sure that you get one as you level up, eventually you'll see one in here. We're just gonna grab a random wand, right? Now the thing about it is, is that Early on, especially with um, Stormblast Mine, the major thing that you're really going to want to do is get added damage. Now these early wands can actually roll pretty good stats. The very, very low level wands can get really good spell. I mean, look at that. Plus one to level of all lightning spell skill gems and critical strike chance increase for spells. If you got that and then maybe regaled it, and then on top of that you crafted like say percentage lightning damage, that'd carry you through most of the game, legit. That'd be ridiculous, right? But basically what I'm getting at is that these wands can roll, oh, of course I had a prophecy. These wands can roll insane mods on them. Like legitimately, it's not that hard to get some pretty crazy mods. There's chaos damage over time multiplier. There's some spell damage. There's more spell damage and mana again. Spell damage. I mean, it's it's kind of insane how much you can actually roll on these wands when they're when they're super low eye level. So grab a carved wand, not a driftwood wand like you see here. Grab a carved wand and just hold on to it for later. See if you can roll some good stuff on it because you're going to need it when you swap into spell slinger. You want the faster attack speed of the base attack speed of the weapon before you get there. Now another thing that you should be thinking about, if you're having issues while leveling with resists, as soon as you hit Act 2 and you save Helena, you're going to get access to a hideout, and in this hideout you're going to have a crafting bench. Now the crafting bench is going to give you access to resist crafts. Now very early on, these only require level 12. You can put these resists on every single piece of your gear. Any rare blue white piece that you have, you can craft fire, cold, lightning resist on all of them. So if you're having issues with resist, you really should be looking to just spending a transmutation orb to get an extra 16 to 20 resist on like, you could do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 pieces of gear. So you could get up to 200 resists just from crafting this on most of your gear. So keep that in mind. It's a really good thing to prevent yourself from dying, especially early on in the league. Now you might be wondering, oh, well, I don't have any transmutation orbs or alteration orbs early on. Pick up random items like blues and yellows and just vendor them. If you need more transmutation orbs, you just vendor items that are unidentified. If you need more alteration orbs, you need to vendor items that are identified. Now, another thing that a lot of people don't know is that you can actually vendor orbs of transmutation, blacksmith sweatstones, and armor scraps. You can vendor these for a huge amount of wisdom scrolls. Look at this. 
So you can get a ton of wisdom scrolls from these things. I typically do transmutation orbs, but on this build, for instance, you don't really need blacksmith's whetstones. So I would sell the blacksmith's whetstones to get scrolls of wisdom. That would be what I would do. That'll help you get through the first couple of acts, the first bits of, you know, difficulty that you have with the resist and such. Just make sure that you keep an eye on that. Now, the next part of this video is going to be about path of building. I want to stress this. All of the information that you need is down in the path of building in the description. Go download Path of Building if you don't have it. Load in my paste bin, and I've got notes and all kinds of stuff in there. Please just keep an eye on that. I'm going to update it consistently all the way up until the league begins, and it should have the most up-to-date information that you'll need to play this build. With that said, let's jump over into the Path of Building. All right, so in the Path of Building here, I'm gonna keep this short. I just wanna give you guys an idea of what you're looking for. I have multiple skill trees here, okay? I have a bunch of skill trees for what points that you should take while leveling. Make sure that you keep an eye on some of these points because like these two points here and these three points here, you need to respect those later on. You don't actually keep them later into the game. So make sure that you keep an eye on any points that you need to basically respec in later on. These are the leveling zones. I've got skills as well as all of the abilities that should, you should use, all of the links for them. I mean, this is the leveling with Stormblast Mine and Orb of Storms, the Spellslinger transition. These are the links that I suggest that you use for them. Um, the Unleash version of Ball Lightning that you should be using as soon as you get to 38 and you're swapping over into Archmage. And then I've got the end game skills here as well. In the item sets, I've got budget gear with easy to get uniques. I've got budget gear with no uniques whatsoever if you're on like Soul of Cell Found or something like that. I've got my gear that I use to complete every single bit of content in the game. I literally did everything. We even went and one shot ourselves to Aziri. Like I, I did everything, it was a joke. And then I also do have some expensive items that are a little bit better than the items that I have. You don't need these things. You legitimately don't need them. These are just meant to be items that you should be like, look off into the sky is some lofty crazy items that maybe one day if you spend 500 exalts you'll have right that's what these items are they're not meant to be obtainable other than that the configuration should be correct i don't know if i've missed anything in here but i don't think that i have it's on awakener 8 cirrus keep in mind that the damage that you see on the ball lightning over here is not accurate whatsoever this dps is not accurate so keep that in mind the actual dps is kind of listed here in the notes. Oh yeah, in the notes. I have a ton of information in here. Read the notes if you're having problems with the build. It's kind of accurately posted here, but I don't have an updated calculator, unfortunately, because we don't really have the new numbers on Ball Lightning yet. Um, we we do have them, but it's not, it's not in Path of Building, so I can't give you exact numbers, but these numbers should still be pretty close for the build. All right, guys, so that is Ball Lightning Archmage Ascendant, a ridiculously powerful build. The Flask survived the nerf, so I think that it's going to be one of the better starters that I have available. As long as you're okay with spamming a mana flask like a bunch of times and potentially destroying your wrist. But all of that aside, super, super powerful build. Remember guys, if you enjoy my content, make sure to like this video. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content similar to this and stay safe out there in Ray class. And I'll see you guys in 3.12 Heist League.